So this is just a follow-up to the video I posted yesterday, the response to Jeren's challenge. And uh, the reason I'm making this video is that there are some people who are not understanding that the motion of the mount I use is identical to the motion that would be seen if the laser or the camera was fitted to a ball. We don't need to physically reproduce the entire ball because all we need to do is correctly model the motion of that laser or the camera as it would occur on the ball. So let's just consider the Tropic of Cancer. Now if we're taking star trails in reality, we're going to have the camera mounted on a tripod and the latitude of that camera is not going to change because it's stationary on the ground as the Earth is rotating. So as the Earth rotates, it's remaining at the same latitude the whole time. In this case, let's assume it's the Tropic of Cancer. So we would have our camera or our laser like this and it's going to be rotating around the Earth like that. Now, because the latitude is not changing, we are only concerning ourselves with that particular latitude. Now, if we look at the Earth from above, you can see that the Tropic of Cancer is actually a circle. In fact, every line of latitude is a circle. The further away you get from the equator, the smaller that circle becomes, but it's still a circle that is rotating. So let's remove all of the globe and only leave the specific line of latitude that we have the camera or the laser mounted on. And what that's going to leave us with is essentially a circle like this. And the circle is rotating about a central point. That's the fixed single point of latitude rotating. So if we've got our laser on this circular point and it's rotating around as the Earth is rotating, that's the motion that we need to model. We need to model the motion of this laser moving around a circle. Okay, And that's exactly what my mount did and I'm just going to demonstrate that now just with a time lapse of the actual laser. So we don't need to reproduce the entire globe in the model because all that matters is the motion of the laser or the camera. Now having said that, I'm quite happy to repeat this experiment when I get home because I have uh, a number of globes there and, I, and I'm quite happy to do that with a physical globe for anyone who is still not able to understand that just using the mount that I used is actually identical to having a physical globe there because all that matters is the actual motion of that laser which was simply going around a circle and I'll demonstrate that now with the mount. So since a camera mounted on a single latitude is rotating around a circle we're now going to demonstrate that this mount is actually causing the laser to move around a circle just as it would if it was on the earth at a specific latitude and uh, because I'm in a hotel room, I have to use a little bit of innovation and the two coat hangers are just holding the camera there nicely. So I'm just going to run a quick uh, star trail mode with the mount rotating 360 degrees. So this is the result of the time lapse of the laser on the mount. As you can see, it's moving around that circle, which is exactly what we just explained is the motion of the laser as it would be on a globe. So hopefully that will help uh, people understand and visualize why my mount actually was the correct geometry that uh, produced the results that you would see on a globe. However, as I said, I will repeat this experiment with the globe. I'm away on a work trip and I take a lot of toys, but uh, a 12 inch globe is not normally part of my uh, travel kit. However, I won't make that mistake again. Next time I'll pack the globe as well.